The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Hi, I'm Tom Ballantyne, author of O'Reilly O'Reilly, here with Detective Mike Zulo, the lead investigator with the Cold Case Posse under Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Sheriff of Maricopa County, Arizona, the largest, um, population-wise, the largest county in the state of Arizona. And as we all know, Sheriff Joe is the most celebrated and highly recognized sheriff in all of America. And as we also know, he is conducting uh, with Mike's, under Mike's leadership, an investigation, an, an historic investigation of the President of the United States, but not so much the President, frankly, as the documents that have been provided to prove, if you will, his uh, eligibility. So I'm, I'm gra grateful that Mike has uh, consented to this interview and consider Mike a friend and, and quite frankly, a hero because of his willingness to do what, and, and Sheriff Joe's willingness as well, to do what apparently no one else in this country is willing to do, and that's to simply confront the evidence. So, Mike, I appreciate your, Thank you. your being here. Uh, I understand you're not getting a lot of sleep these days. Is that uh, accurate? I haven't gotten a lot of sleep in the last eight months. Eight months. So that's, that's how long, basically, you've been on this investigation. Yes. And Mike, you, you've uh, had other uh, professional experience in your life, but you've been in law enforcement for the past 13 years, is yes. that correct? Mm -hmm. And you served as a detective and as a police officer in New Jersey prior to moving to Arizona. Correct. And uh, what's your experience here in Arizona in terms of uh, police work, if you will, or detective work? The only experience I have here in Arizona is with the uh, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Uh, okay. Formerly with their cold case posse. And that's been for the past seven years, yeah, is that correct? seven years, I think. Okay. Um, I'd like to actually just ask a few questions about our elected officials here in the state of Arizona, uh, both state and national officials, and ask uh, what, what uh, inquiries they may have made of you and of your investigation in order for them to be apprised of the uh, status of the investigation and of the facts that you've uncovered. Uh, I'd like to start with our Republican, and quite frankly every official I'll name here is a Republican. Uh, interestingly, but our Republican Governor Jan Brewer. Um, I don't know how far Jan's office is from here, but it's within a couple of miles, I suspect. I also suspect she has a telephone, but maybe not. The budget's rather tight these days. But in any case, has, has Sheriff, or excuse me, has Governor uh, Brewer uh, made any personal inquiries uh, of you or of the sheriff regarding the investigation? Not to my knowledge. I know I, have rec I haven't received any, and if the sheriff did, I'm sure he would tell me. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. Um, so here we have a Republican governor um, who has not made any inquiries whatsoever into the investigation that's taking place a stone's throw, if you will, from her office uh, right here in Maricopa County. Not, no. not a word that you've heard. Well, let's go down the list. How about the State Attorney General, also Republican again, Tom Horn. Has Tom made any inquiries? No, sir. Interesting. Now, Tom's role is, is as Attorney General, I'm sure most people know this, but he's the Chief Law Enforcement Officer of the State. Is that correct? Yes, he is. Interesting. So, no inquiries. Um, we are all aware, of course, of, of Secretary of State Ken Bennett whose primary responsibility, or at least one of his primary responsibilities as Secretary of State, is to ensure the accuracy, if you will, of the uh, ballot and the eligibility, if you will, of the candidates whose names are on the ballot. Has Secretary Bennett made any inquiries of your office, Mike? No, uh, we made inquiries of Secretary Bennett, but he's made no inquiries. So you reached out to him? Yes. And you did, in fact, have some interview or face-to-face uh, -face discussion with him? I had two meetings with him. Two meetings, and that was sometime within the last 30 days, or yes. approximately. What can you tell us, essentially, what uh, transpired in that meeting, and what, what was his reaction to, to the facts, if you will, that you, you revealed to him? This meeting took place uh, about two weeks prior to us, I believe, going to the state of Hawaii. Okay. Um, we were discussing the dilemma he found himself in regarding uh, keeping Barack Obama's name possibly off the ballot. 
at the insistence of, of some of us uh, within the uh, con his constituency here in the state of Arizona, right? Correct. And uh, had about a 45 minute meeting with him. Um, during the meeting, uh, he advised me that he had not seen our March 1st press conference. Hmm. had not watched any of the videos that we produced and really didn't have a working knowledge of what we were working on. Amazing. So he's the Secretary of State charged with the responsibility of essentially uh, maintaining the sanctity of the, of the ballot uh, and, and he had not even watched the, the press conference or seen any of the evidence that was presented therein. That's right. I actually had to start from point A and try to bring them up to speed in 20 minutes, something that would take hours to do. It, it, amazing, frankly. I won't spend a lot of time on these other names, Mike, but let's just go down the list. House Speaker, again, Republican, Andy Tobin. Any no. any inquiry? How about Senate President Jeff, or excuse me, uh, Steve Pierce? Uh, no. Okay, again, a Republican. We have basically a, a so-called veto-proof Republican. And Mike's not a political guy. I am, frankly, um, so I'm the guy asking the questions, but we have a a veto-proof, if you will, Republican majority in this uh, legislature, and and they act like they have no interest whatsoever in your investigation. That's what it appears <laughs> from their from their obvious uh, absence. Okay, uh, let's let's now jump to the uh, federal level or the national level. Senator John McCain lives when he's here, I suppose, uh, which may not be often, but uh, lives here in Maricopa County. I assume that John Kyle does, both U.S. Senators uh, with, you know, in John K uh, McCain's case, 30 years of experience, not sure about Kyle, but he's been there for a while. Neither of them have, have made any inquiries uh, of your office. No, not that I'm aware of. Amazing. Uh, John McCain, of course, famously uh, stated about a week, uh, about two weeks ago, uh, during the time I believe that you're in Hawaii, that uh, Barack Obama's name would be on the ballot and a day or two later, uh, Ken Bennett, uh, somewhat gleefully perhaps, uh, accepted uh, on face value the statement from uh, uh, Onaka that, uh, that the uh, document or the information on the document was the same as what was in the file. Speaking of the WhiteHouse.gov uh, document and their, their vault copy, uh, and apparently McCain had put the word out that his name would be on the ballot and, and Secretary Bennett apparently agree. Uh, bottom line is that with all of these candidates, including, have not mentioned, uh, uh, Congressional uh, or Congressman uh, Jeff Flake, who's now running for the U.S. Senate for John Kyle's seat. Also, those, those opposing him, uh, Will Cardin, another Republican. Uh, by the way, Clara Van Steenwijk, who is a Tea Party candidate, a Republican, but a Tea Party candidate, has openly called for an investigation of the president and is in full support, I'll let you know, Mike, uh, of your investigation. He's the only one, and then there's a fellow named Brian Hackbarth, also um, a, a former mayor here in, in Arizona, has also, in fact, stated on the record, because I asked him, uh, that he would, in fact, favor an investigation. Again, that's not your purpose. You're here to do your own investigation from a law enforcement perspective. Uh, final, finally, we have uh, congressional candidates Matt Salmon and Will Cardin, again, both Arizona uh, Republicans, who are vying for Jeff Flake's uh, soon-to-be-vacated congressional seat. Neither of them will, because I've interviewed them, uh, they've stated on camera that they will not pursue an investigation. So, And none of these candidates have actually made inquiries of your office. No. Well, it looks like we've pretty much covered that. Uh, bottom line is that the Republicans in both the state and federal government representing Arizona, citizens uh, have no interest in your investigation. Hi, I'm Tom Ballantyne again here with um, Mike Z Zulo and my cameraman and co-producer Gabe Zolna in Sheriff Arpaio's uh, downtown Phoenix office, Sheriff Joe being the uh, celebrated Sheriff of Maricopa County, Arizona. And we're continuing our interview of Mike with regard, Mike is the lead investigator of the cold case posse, investigating in an historic investigation a sitting president of the United States, or at least the documents that would uh, prove his, uh, uh, his, both his identity and his eligibility. And uh, we've covered the fact that not a single Republican 
official that, that we're aware of in this state has uh, supported or even inquired of Mike regarding his now eight-month investigation. But I'd like to turn uh, our attention briefly to the local uh, news media. Mike, uh, during the, the March 1st press conference and shortly thereafter, Channel 5, and by the way, pretty much the national media and all of the state media were invited, is that correct? Correct. A number of them did show up, as it turns out. The local media. The local media, pretty much, so the national media did not. Somewhat uh, missing in action again, or AWOL, more accurately. But Channel 5, the local CBS affiliate, actually, to my, you know, to my uh, amazement, frankly, seemed to cover it with some degree of, uh, of you know, balance. Did you recall seeing their, uh, their coverage? I was participating in their conference. Yes, well, there you were. <laughs> you saw it from the inside, frankly. I saw it from the other side. Well, well many of us were surprised at, at the fact that, A, they would actually cover it, and B, that they were not uh, lashing out, at least the coverage I saw, against you and the sheriff. Uh, you were, of course, asked on about who you voted for and what your you know, political leanings were. Not a question that I remember by the media at large regarding the evidence that you had very carefully yeah. articulated. Uh, but, but let's talk about the other uh, NB, NBC local affiliate. Uh, have they covered this at all to your knowledge? Or have they made any inquiries of you? I believe after the press conference I had inquiries made from a number of these agencies. Okay. I did appear on a couple of them. Okay. I don't remember which ones. All right. So NBC, CBS, Fox News, do you remember if they covered it or not? I don't recall. Okay. Nationally, nationally, I can tell you they didn't. Yes, nationally, it's been a complete uh, stonewalling, if you will. Uh, let's talk about the radio. And again, uh, this is just to, to to determine, if you will, whether these people have actually made inquiries of you personally or of the sheriff, and it, and it would probably have come through you. Uh, Barry Young and Michelle uh, Larson. No. Okay. How about Terry Gilbert? No. Uh, how about Mac and Gatos? No. Mac and Gatos, by the way, had Secretary Bennett on uh, right after he made his announcement that uh, he was accepting the the word of Alvin Onaka that the the document was legit in spite of all of the evidence that you produced. And Mac and Gatos, um, so-called conservatives, completely mocked the whole investigation, mocked the very you know notion of of even worrying about whether the commander in chief was you know a legal citizen. But, uh, and Secretary of uh, State Bennett famously apologized for having, uh, if, if he had in any way embarrassed the state of Arizona by asking the state of Hawaii to, to verify his, his uh, credentials. Uh, I was stunned by that. So none of these people, the local uh, people, have made inquiries after that initial um, no. press conference. Okay. Uh, that probably uh, is all we need to do on that, but let me just ask you one, one other uh, series of questions, if I can, Mike, regarding the inter-jurisdictional um, um, cooperation among the law enforcement and other government agencies. In your 13 years in law enforcement, um, has it generally been the case that one you know, police department or one um, legal uh, entity or agency will cooperate with another in this type of, not this type because it's unprecedented, but in a, in a typical criminal investigation? Generally, if it's uh, an investigation that would have multiple jurisdictions, there would be cooperation between the officers on the ground and, and those in command. Okay. Um, in the case of, of our current investigation, what has been your experience thus far? Nobody's going to cooperate with us. Nobody wants to talk to us. Nobody on the federal level is going to talk to us. Uh, we made inquiries from certain government officials and basically have been told, uh, if you have a problem, go to the FBI. Okay. <laughs> so, and the FBI, I suspect, falls somewhere under the jurisdiction of Eric Holder. I'm not entirely certain, but... Uh, um, okay, so basically, in this case, not only have they not cooperated, uh, would it be typical uh, in a... In a normal investigation for these agencies if they had information to voluntarily contact you? Does that happen? If they have information to voluntarily contact us, that, that, that could happen. But basically what we would do in something like this, this is a state uh, 
and a county investigation in one sense right. that really should be turned over to the federal authorities except there's no place to turn it over. Do you mean you're not, you, you mean the Department of Justice would not, uh, would not uh, want to handle this for you? Um, I think he's got enough problems on his own. I'm sure that's true, fast and furious, etc. <laughs> um, okay, but so bottom line is, is that not only they have not, you know, offered any uh, help or cooperation, have they resisted your efforts? When we made, I think we made public, uh, Sheriff Arpaio put some requests in, uh, in writing to folks at Selective Service and whatnot. And the way that the uh, information comes back is basically one line, one paragraph, and if you have any problems, you know, you can take it up with the FBI. Interesting. So very little cooperation. There's no cooperation. No cooperation. Okay. Well, um, I think we were somewhat aware of that. Uh, I'm not sure that there's a whole lot more to ask, Mike, other than uh, I did actually uncover, in fact, Nellie Ristbet of Butter Dezillion's uh, blog, excellent blog, who has been on this issue for a long time, provided me, and I, I believe you as well, with a report from the Inspector General of two, in the year 2000, which was an entirely focused on the huge uh, national problem with fraudulent birth certificates. And uh, the Inspector General herself, who is a, uh, works under the direction of the Secretary of Health um, in the, in the uh, Department of Health, uh, Education, and Welfare, or HHS actually at this point, did this report, and it's a very extensive, in-depth report, documenting the problem of fraudulent birth documents, birth certificates, nationwide, and encouraging all agencies at all levels do their best to to uncover this sort of fraud, but uh, would you say that in the case of the state of Hawaii, you were there two weeks ago, that you got cooperation from them in trying to determine whether this birth certificate was in fact a, a, a legal document or, or as opposed to a fraudulent one? I can't dis discuss a lot of what happened over there in Hawaii, um, okay. but I can tell you that we didn't receive cooperation. Very good. When you When you showed up at the Department of Health, um, you were actually greeted, if you will, or received by a, a uh, someone from the from the attorney general's office, as opposed to the Department of Health. Is That's that correct. correct. Did that sort of raise a red flag for you? <laughs> Usually, if somebody sends in their attorney, it raises a red flag. I got it. Well, Mike, I'll, I want to tell you that I, as a private citizen, am extremely grateful for all that you have done. Thank I consider you. you a modern day Wyatt Earp, if you will, you look a little bit like him, uh, and of course Sheriff Joe as well, and we are truly grateful for your willingness to take this on when no one else in the country is willing to do so. The Congress, um, you know, the House, the Senate, of course we don't expect the Senate to do it, but the Republican Congress um, at our state level, no one is willing to even pass an eligibility bill or even in our state to discuss it, and yet you and the sheriff and the other members of the posse have basically risked your life and your reputations, if you will, um, to pursue this. And uh, I can just tell you for a vast uh, number of American citizens that we are truly grateful. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And we pray for you. And, uh, and, and Ronald Reagan, we were at his uh, memorial uh, over in Simi Valley, Valley two weeks ago, Lord Moncton and I, and basically there's an inscription there which reads something to the effect that he believes that all men are good and that in the end, truth will prevail if we stand for truth. And I believe, Mike, that's what you're doing, and uh, I think you have the thanks of both man and, and heaven for your efforts. Well, I hope so, and the truth needs no polish. And thanks. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.